Babylon, thank you for coming tonight. Uh, we have some real goodies lined up. And what I want to do is what I always do, not give you any kind of theory or any idea, just to jump into the sources. Tonight, we're going right down to that formula. We're going to look at a few, just a couple of lines of it and follow the trail that it leads us so that we can penetrate and see that right as it's being performed. Tonight, I want to jump off right into the work um, because I know that I have you for a short time. But before I do so, I'd like to introduce to you tonight's spirit. It's always nice to bring along an ancestor to the group, and mine here is with us tonight here. Um, this is Harry Hansen and Harry's horse. And Harry Hansen was in the U.S. Cavalry. Um, I picked him up in Tucson, Arizona, where he had his last job and um, with the cavalry. Um, anyway, Harry was a great guy, quite a, quite, a, uh, quite a soldier, quite a drinker, ended up drunk in formation, kicked out of his unit. Um, it, it, the uh, commanding officer of that unit was George Custer. Yes. So he was shipped west and ended up as a prison train guard. Um, anyway, about a decade later, he managed to guard this gentleman on the way from Arizona to Florida. And it was there that he realized the world was topsy-turvy, that this was no criminal that he was with, but was a great leader of his people. You could say a king. In his eyes, he was a king. Anyway, he shared his tobacco with him uh, in order to bring him some sort of honor in the midst of his circumstances to the children of that man. Um, I say greetings. Tonight, I want to start with a Greek passage from right off the bat here from uh, our text, our theriac, right? From the Ahidnon, the Ahidnon through the Ahidna. This is going to get this is going to get uh, quite dark and dense with the reality of the ancient magic and cult. So hold on to yourselves. Yes, I'd like to turn to line seventy-one. Seventy-one. I'm just going to read it to you. Yeah, if someone of the Ioboloi, Ioboloi, you ask, what are Ioboloi? Um, we'll get to them. Let me just finish a few lines here. If someone of the Ioboloi should be overcome in the bending, or if someone should take that hated potion of black death, You would prepare the cup equally in the darkness and at dawn, providing the cup of Hillary to those overcome. Yes, yes, yes. And you would always lead a breathing person to the bed of love most willingly, taking pleasure in such pain-killing power. Oh, Caesar. Oh, Caesar. Yes. Beautiful. And... um. What is going on here? Who are these Yoboloi? Let's just go through this and take a, to, we'll take a little photo um, jaunt for you here as we're doing this. But I just want to start at the beginning. 
if you are to consume, if one of the yobaloi is to consume um, this potion of cyanic death, the blue death, the dark death, yes, if one's to, it, it, to consume it, the Galene, Hillary Galene, good goddess, is the subject of our entire text. Um, that goddess will be able to protect you in those dark harbors. Yeah, yeah. And um, so who are these Eobola? The I, I want you to consider who are these people who would be doing this, who in their right mind, um, which cult members would be doing this, right? This is part of the initiation. So these Eoboloi are those literally who carry the eos or who throw it's it's really throwing the idea is projectile to throw it so we're thinking arrows yes yes we're thinking arrows let's go to eobolos when we get a chance we're thinking arrows and we're thinking poisons and we're thanking those who are using them right look at this entry eobolos shooting arrows. Isn't that nice? And notice the little Greek word toxon. That was Alice, by the way. Let's keep Alice up there for a minute. Notice the little word toxon, right? That's a bow or an arrow or a bow and arrow. Um, or in English, a toxin. Yes, yeah, same root, right? Same root. Why? Because these are poison arrow wielding people. And these people are active in the use of a whole bunch of different drugs meant to induce something called oysterous, oystromania, the thing that the person gets who is stung, Krio, the Christos. Yes, yes. Okay, as we're reading this, I want uh, we're going to continue, but I want you to look at, um, let's, let's finish Eobolos. Throw Eobolos up there again. Let's get that. Yes. Shedding venom, venomous of animals, right? Of animals. Um, look down at the last one. Number two, it says of arrows poisoned, and it gives you the Orphic hymn, 12 lines 16. 12 lines 16. Can we go to that? We have that. Yes. Let's go to that, that one, the Orphic. The next passage. Yes. Good. Good, 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 good. And what is, who is this Orphic hymn to? The Orphic hymn is to Heracles. He's not who you think. You, um, you've been living in a fairy tale world. I love doing this. I absolutely love doing this. You've been living in a fairy tale world, right? Um, yes, no. Who is the real Heracles? Whew. Yeah, quite a different fellow. Quite a different fellow. Let's just look at this one line. Yes, look at this. Oh, what does he do? He sends out. The command here at the end is to send out his kalos, kalapas, his kiris. Um, what are kiris? Kiris are the death spirits that come for you in your justified right moment. Usually they're depicted in a battlefield where the ares is that repelling force of war. They're usually there. And, you know, different cultures pick these up in different ways, but they're the spirits that go along and harvest. They rip the soul from the body. Isn't that nice? Anyway, that's what Heracles sends. And how does it say he sends it there? It says he sends it with his arrows, with his arrows, his flying. Go back, please. Yes. With his flying Eoboloi, his flying Eoboloi, yes, the delivery mechanism of his Eos. Bring us up the Eos, please, Chewy. Next definition that we're getting to down here, maybe. There we go. Mm, Eos, take a look at this. Eos. In one case, it's an arrow. Notice at the bottom, good arrow. And then uh, let's go to the next Eos. Oh, look at this. Poison as of serpents. Poison as of serpents. That's the base of everything that they're talking about with this um, communion toxin, right? It's an aerotoxin that they're using. So, again, 
um, get your bearings, know where we are. You can kind of see the people around us dancing. You know who they are. Okay, let's go back to, I'm going to uh, read you a couple of things from that translation again. If one of these guys from the Eoboloi, right, one of these poison throwers, um, by the way, it's also an epithet. Um, Artemis is called Eokeira. Eokeira, she who dispenses the eos. Isn't that nice? And that's why she's a huntress and a midwife, a huntress and a midwife. It's the poison that connects both of those things because she's using the poison in her hunting and in her midwifery. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? Mm. If one of these eoboloi should be overcome in the bending, <laughs> yeah, and should take or should take, if somebody should take the poma of the Black Death. Now, realize that is a specific medicine slash communion drink, the, the, the poma. The poma is like the sacred drink. This is the communion, right? It's the prepared cup that you're taking. Potion, old, old word. You can translate it as potion, but then you start to sound like we're drifting into, uh, you know, Something extremely modern. Yeah. Um, it's the potion of cyanic death. Interesting that they would call it that. Mm, mm. So then you would prepare, he says, you would prepare the cup, right? That, and you do it um, through the transition. It's strange, but you do it through the transition from that dark night, Kuria Nukta, to the dawn because that's what we're doing here is we are bringing the dawn back to the person who has entered into the death this is good cult stuff i mean come on this uh, yeah wow um yeah people might want to tell you things about ancient cults it's never worth it go to the cult itself watch how they're interacting remember this is nero by the way for those of you who are asking the question, what does this have to do with the Bible, right? The person who is reading this, who it's addressed to, that person is the person who beheaded another cult leader. Yeah, very popular cult leader whose influence became a profound impact. So you've been reading the fairy tale. Now we've landed in the history and you can see, oh, wait a minute, the dude who beheaded the other dude, what are the drugs that he was into, right? What are the drugs? What's going on, right? Why is he all the way back in Rome? This is fantastic, yeah. So you prepare that cup um, for the one overcome, right? You set out that kylix, you set out that cup, you prepare it. For the one domnominois that comes from Damazo or Damao or Domno, that, that one too, they're all from the same root. It's the Delta Mu, and it means to be subdued by something, to be overcome. When you're in that potion, you are overcome by that force. And do you know who you use in that place? You use Domnomeneus. Yes, Domnomeneus. Oh, who is he? Right, remember, we're plugged in with the analog type. Who is Domnomeneus? He's the one who emerged when Rhea, the flow, the pair of Kronos, when Rhea reached into the earth as she was giving birth and clenched the ground in her hands, Domnomeneus came forward. Okay, that's nice. That's nice. Um, I'll show you the magic words at the end, but I will not give you their meaning. Um, yes, you have, to, you have to derive that on your own, um, which you will. Let's do that, though. Um, let's go forward. So I wanted you to see that passage of, uh, you know, what is, um, and by the way, they're leading him to the bed. 
right? They're leading the initiate to the bed. And there's a lot about chafing. Earlier on, there's a section about chafing and about penile problems and about, it's all very Osirian. If you've listened to it, it's like being, I, I'll describe it this way as I'm sitting there reading it. <clears throat> and having said that, guys, we got to step back for a second and say, this document that Nero has managed to get his grubby hands on, this document um, preserves a very, very, very beautiful art. Um, it is using expressions that are also used, technical terms that are used by the famous priest Nicander, even Cicero um, had read Nicander, right? Nicander is a priest of Apollo. You like this? Clarion Apollo, the god of the oracle. This is who he is. And he's writing to a friend of his in one of his works who happens to be the priest of Rhea, Sibylle, performing the rites of Attis. And um, he's composed a song. Nicander's composed a song for this guy. And it has to do with, guess what? The, th the drugs, the drugs within the rite and um, the poisons and everything um, immaculate. It's, it's gorgeous. Let's go to a little Nicander. Let's bring him up, shall we? Some Nicander. Give me that Nicander text. Yeah. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Um, this is, yeah, this is Nicander. I just want you to read from Hate at the end of the line. Hate Bacchae. Like when the Bacchans boson um, shout, shout out, shout out what? The Oxumelis, that song that they have. That song that they have. Bring it back up, please. Good, good. And they are what? Look at the last word in that line. Oistroi. What are they under the influence? They're under the influence of that, that oysterous that holds its head back. <laughs> Isn't that descriptive? Oh, he's the one who said, Nicander said, you got to watch the fire of Medea. That stuff will kill you. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, good stuff. I love it. I love it. There's one more, Nicander. Can we go to the next passage maybe? Yes, yes. Um, here, I put the, uh, this is the great translation for anybody who doesn't uh, have it. Nicander is Gow and Schofield did a fantastic, leave it up, did a fantastic um, translation to the best of their ability. Look, a lot of the plants and stuff, not so good, right? Because it's vague, right? But, and they're using a priestly language. So it's a little bit, you know, on times it borders and in kind of insanity. What? Did he say that? Anyway, um, look at this. Let not the evil ferment of the soul injure a man. It will often swell up in his chest. At other times, it will choke him when it is fostered over the viper's coil deep in its lair, sucking up the monster's venom and the noxious breath from its mouth. This is the evil ferment, which they call fungi in general. For to different kinds, different names have been assigned. So you know what that mushroom is, and you know that that mushroom um, is especially grown to take in the influence of the viper. That ferment, that ferment, um, is what that mushroom is. Yes. Right? Look at this. Look at the Greek. It's beautiful. Zmoma. Right? The ferment. Uh, and this is why now all of a sudden it makes sense to you. Right? Okay. First, let's finish the picture. You see, you're watching the vipers. They're crawling around, doing their thing in their dens. And these mushrooms are there. The mushrooms are absorbing those toxins. They're absorbing that breath, that vitality. Right, that comes through the viper. For those of you with ears to hear, you'll hear. And now, as you wake up, you know why Jesus said, Watch out for the manna. Right? Watch out for that fermentation. That fermentation, the fermentation of the Pharisees. 
Yeah, the fermentation of the Pharisees. Now you know I call them generation of vipers, right? It's we're working under the same system, right? Jesus is no dummy. He's picked up the right. He's picked up the influence from uh, Nicander. I forgot to tell you, is like second century BC, second century BC, and is so popular. Everybody by first century when Jesus and his crew are out. Everybody there is, he's in the atmosphere, right? One of the few that is. And his works really um, had a huge effect. There's a lot of Byzantine work done specifically on the candor, right? Um, most classical scholars avoid him like the plague um, because his Greek is impenetrable. Yes, you heard me. His Greek is impenetrable. If you want it, next time somebody boasts to you that they can show you Greek, flash up the very first thing that we, uh, um, our bit from Nero today, that we had just flashed that up. He won't be able to translate. I guarantee you, I guarantee you people, and, you, and let me tell you why. Because in that passage are hapox legomena, words that only appear here, right? <laughs> so we have problems. We have problems in translating this stuff. What do we do? We do what the Victorians did. We run back to Hesychius. We resurrect this guy from the fifth century, fourth and fifth centuries. We resurrect him. We say, tell us what these words mean. And we go back to Aisa. And we look at Aisa and we see what she, we see what she, what she says. Can we have the next reading? We need to proceed. We have eight, uh, nine more minutes until we self-destruct. Mm, yes, one of those, sure. Let's go. Um, I want you to look at Damazo, just to, you know, to be overcome, to be overcome. Look at, um, I want the second one here. Just take a look at uh, number three of the powers of nature to overpower. Domnomineus, baby, Domnomineus. Okay, keep going. This is, this is real. You know, we are, we are at the, um, place where the magician comes into being. I mean, we're with the dactyls. We're with the dactyls. This is good, good old magic. This is Mycenaean stuff, right? This is snake goddess Ville. We love this. Okay, let's get another reading up here. Um, yes. Oh, why not? Let's go ahead and throw up the Ephesia grammata, right? The Ephesian words right? Um, these were written, well, they're written in a lot of places in antiquity. Um, you can look it up and find yourself a list of what sources we have that have them. Um, but you, you really want to talk about the Temple of Artemis, right? At Ephesus, where this cult seems to be coming from. These words are words, and of course they have this wonderful library. Look at this wonderful library, right? This is coming from the cults that you and I are, wor are worshiping, <laughs> you and I are working with now, right? This library is, that's where it's coming from. Pythagoras says that, right? Um, if you want to found a city, you should build a temple of the muse, right? Start, your, start with your museum. Anyway, let's put up the Ephesian letters. And what people have traditionally said about these <clears throat> is that, these writings, is that it reflects an older language. Is it Greek? Well, it's expressed in Greek. Yes, yes. Oh, the very last, uh, let's go to the very Eph Ephesian letters here at the end. There we go. There, grammata. Mm -hmm. There. Okay, and um, look, it's expressed in Greek. You can see it in Greek. Askion, kataskion, lix tetrax, damnamneus, aision. Or... I see ya. Now, if you don't know, if you don't know what any of these words mean, um, you're at a loss. What they're used for is to prevent, to prevent any sort of activity, um, quantum activity, if you will, uh, that would be an attack upon oneself. It's a defensive measure. Um, um, uh, report supposedly. Uh, you know, there are people, famous people from antiquity who would use them, right? Um, Marcus Aurelius being one of them, but whatever. Um, 
Yeah. So what do they have to do? What do they have to do? Let's see what people have traditionally made of them. Pull that up. Yes. Ascion. And uh, they say perhaps has something in their ancient sources that say something to do with shade. Perhaps. Please leave that up. Thank you. And um, leeks. Yeah. What is the leeks? If you look this one up in Hesychius, you can find out what it means. And um, it'll be part of a piece of the puzzle for you to put together. Um, he'll tell you about the plagios, right? Anyway, um, tetrarchs, tetrarchs, right. Is that the four cornering? Is that the um, four seasons? Are we getting into the ori? Well, what about the next name? Domnomeneus. Yeah, right. Domnomeneus. Now, the Iseon and Isea, right? He's the power, by the way. The Domnomeneus is the one who is performing the initiation. He's the one who's going through the actual rite, right? It's the daimon and the individual becoming one, right? It's an act of possession. It's an act of possession. Um, but if you look at Iseon, right, and Isea, Right, and you'll notice that we have for the first time a very good example of insertion with C, as in C bule, um, right in the middle of the word to interrupt the flow. And this is something that you're going to catch over and over again in the PGM that they're doing. They play with syllables, they reverse them, they turn them around. Um, they'll take half of one and ins make an insertion, like we just saw. And those are the operating. Those words that they're doing that with are the operators. Look through the PGM, the spells, and you'll see that there are specific operating words. So that is a, an incantation that was popular in antiquity. If you could perform it properly, if you could perform it properly, um, and it had to be repeated in a very specific way so that the, the uh, voice could access that um, invisible dimension around. You know, it's like um, using that voice creates visibility. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, fantastic. Uh, the sex part, you promised the sex, right? It, um, you'd notice that they were leading the gentleman to the bed, to the bed, and he, um, the... A uh, person who is being initiated engages in a sexual activity at a specific time under the influence of specific drugs. So, as detectives, we're, we're one step closer. If we just step back um, and look at the crime scene, right? The mob is there. They're all yelling out, kill him. Right? You got a whole group of people just pissed saying kill him he's arrested in a public park at 4 a.m with in the com company of a naked boy um and the naked boy has what is arguably a medicated bandage used in cult right <sighs> involving the making of a cup yeah yeah, and the consumption. So we have to stand back. We have to say, okay, I know that within these rites, we have other examples of people who are engaged. We, the Greek word there was coitus. You know, we get coitus from it. Um, so we now have, Your Honor, we now have a motive here. We have other contemporary cults that are doing the same acts that are involved in drug-induced um, ritual that is sexual in nature. So this is where, now you see why the London Times said, this area is the last wild frontier of classics, right? Um, it, it's truly an open field. The fact that nobody is working on this is only a frag, is, is only a, caused by our own society's um, laziness. You know, people don't want to study these texts because it's hard. It's hard. You give that sheet to any professor, any professor who claims to be, especially one of these religious historians, 
give them that and say, okay, smarty, who says they translate Greek, translate this. Yeah, you watch what happens because some of the words are some of the words are uh, rooted in traditions that they don't follow. If you want to know the good stuff, um, you got to drink the fire. <laughs> you know what I mean? You got to go deep and you got to see you got to see what's going on. Okay, thank you very much. Now we're going to turn to Rob, who is going to Rob. Tell me something. I want to I want to put this quote up on the screen and I want people to see and I want you to tell me a little bit if you can about the gentleman um, that we're we're putting up here yeah um, I would like to write a book which would drive men mad which would be like an open door leading them where they would never have consented to go in short a door that opens into onto reality thank you Mr. Arto right is um tell do you do you want to Add us something if 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 you could resurrect this man from the grave, would there would he have anything interesting to say and relevant? Oh yeah. Interesting and relevant, yeah. But it's a story and it's um it's a very interesting story that goes back. Uh he's an ancestor to some degree. I don't know what degree he's an ancestor, but to some degree he is. And uh we were talking about him last night and you've you really got me going into the research and I've got to start at the beginning. I've got to go back to the beginning and I've got to go to the discord, uh, a discord that's happening on the beaches of Troy. I want to take you back to the beaches of Troy where there's a discord going on between Agamemnon and Achilles. There's prizes that have been distributed and they've, there's a plague. You mentioned the plague recently. And there's a plague going on. And they're trying to appease the plague. Apollo sent the plague. And um, they try to appease it. And prizes have got to go back. And prizes are getting mixed up and distributed about. And Achilles isn't happy. Achilles is just about to draw his sword. And Agamemnon is has been disgraceful towards him and he feels it so he's about to draw his sword and down comes Athena and we all love Athena you know she's even Achilles loves Athena he, he, he listens to her she comes down and she she stops him she stops his she checks his rage and she's probably the only person Achilles would listen to so he listens to her and he checks his rage and he leaves and he walks away. He walks away from the problems he's having and he makes his way to a beach. He loses his prize and he makes his, makes his way to a beach and he sits on the beach and he's looking at the grey sea and that's all, that's all he's doing. So I get to this point with Homer in the beginning of the Iliad and I'm thinking can I introduce Heraclitus would I be able to introduce him and because um, he's, he's a miserable sod Heraclitus says you know he, he, he doesn't um, he doesn't mix well he does he doesn't go get go into town that often he takes himself off and he likes to take himself off and Achilles has took himself off so I'm thinking maybe we've got this time machine and I can I can, I can move Heraclitus next to Achilles to give him a bit of advice maybe this guy is a he's a hell of a philosopher uh, not much of Homer if, if, if you know your Heraclitus he thought Homer should have been clubbed <laughs> and thrown out but here we are and I want sit with Heraclitus to sit with Achilles and if Chewy you can bring up my first my first image please if it's possible oh, we're not prepared on this end uh, with the images do you have uh, here we'll search for him you get you uh, you keep going with the narrative please okay well I'll just come with the quote then we've got we've got a quote from Heraclitus and the quote is 
what opposes unites and the finest attunement stems from things bearing in opposite directions and all things come about by strife and I, I'm going to read it again what opposes unites and the finest attunement stems from things bearing in opposite directions and all things come about by strife and I think Achilles listened to this point and so we moved into purgation now I've got little things all littered around my screen here and it all stems in one question I've got one question for the gallery out there and anyone who's interested in Armand's work and interested in getting involved in it and I kind of got an example of how fascinating these things can be and how they can work. They're, uh, they're incredible. They're, they're so the question is, how do we get from the Marquis de Sade to the centre of the universe? And I've got this littered all around everywhere. And I think what I've been given is a mirror of sorts. It's a gentleman I'd like you to look into and you've seen his quote at the beginning but we're looking for recognitions i'm looking for recognitions in in this and recognitions of a self of aiming of the entire subject everything um you've been asking for a spell you've been asking for magic and i bought you something else we're going to have a look at it we're going to have a look at a spell tonight and it's dark it's extremely dark. Uh, if you thought Marcus de Sade was bad, then get ready for this one. Uh, so, what can, you, what can you tell us, Rob, about the asylum? What is the? Um, is there a benefit? The to staying in the asylum because both the ghosts that you're that you are um, bringing together here two two of the several that you're bringing together um, yeah. brilliantly is uh they were in insane asylums um the marquis was in an insane asylum correct yeah and um correct me if i'm wrong but was arto as well correct 10 years 10 years and um even then even in care when his uh, group of friends helped get him out got him out of the asylum he was in that's where we'll go to the ville d'everard and we'll move into lunatic asylum and we'll view, I, I hope you've got this one, Chewy. I hope you've got the, the image of the spell. And we'll go into a spell and we'll find out how we get from the Marquis de Sade all the way to the great mother, Kybele. Real quick, Rob, go ahead and email me that thing again and we'll get it up here. Uh, get it to me again. It's not coming through on our end. Okie dokie. How do we get to Jacob's Ladder? And how do we get to the center of the universe? Let me just uh, get this up then. I'm sorry. So as we're waiting, as we're waiting for this, um, people uh, should be thinking about yeah. things like um, French film, <laughs> and yep. um, yeah, and should be tracking down our toe if I'm saying. You know, um, if I'm pronouncing his poor name properly, um, but I'll tell um, you. yeah. Okay, I've done that again. Our toe, yes, like a toe. So and let's bring, let's just bring it together for people as Chewie gets this. Let's just bring it together for people and um, make sure that they see this is a necromantic act, right? We have to bring together uh, yeah, uh, these forces. What um, we we're, are, we're, we're performing necromancy. Go ahead. Can you put that up, Olivia? Let's see if we. What what we've Let's got see. is a gentleman who's treated as a lunatic and locked away as a lunatic. Who essentially is um, one of the most brilliant men there is <clears throat> around his time, and he's recognised for these facts by Matisse, by Picasso, by all the intellectuals around in his day. Um. This gentleman has taken a 
quite a hit in his life, basically because he didn't have the finances to keep himself out of a lunatic asylum. So then he was put in a lunatic asylum by decree. That's where he's gone. And the uh, the friends decided, they went and visited him and they thought, we're, we're a terrible state. It, what 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 he what had changed in them 10 years is tremendous he'd been in there and had over 50 bouts of electro shock therapy various degrees of therapy that just ruined you and there we have <laughs> there we have the spell and this is a guy who is qualified he knows his stuff he's not a person who doesn't know how to write a spell this is self-titled spell it's from may the 14th 1939 and it's addressed to mademoiselle mosse and she never received this letter mademoiselle mosse never received it it's purple crayon and colored pencils and you can see the state of it it's burnt it's got burns in it it's and I'll take you through the description in the book it's in. And it was made on the third and fourth pages of a letter signed and dated, as, as I've said. The letter, with its spell, must have been entrusted with a visitor who had come to see Otto at Ville Ebrard to be delivered to the addressee, who never received it. The paper is burned in several spots and one outer edge in the cigarette with a cigarette or match it reads you will live a dead woman you will not cease departing this life and descending i send you a force of death shocking in my <laughs> read it to us read it to us rob one more time i want to hear the, i want to hear it one more time you will what and say it again you will live a dead woman. You will not cease. Departing this life and descending, I send you a force of death. It's a death threat. Fantastic. Who really knows what they're doing. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic! That isn't that great. You look what you did. You brought look up what the news did. Wait, yeah. Where the news yeah, did? Right. Yeah. That that's yeah. that's what I'm trying to get across to right now to you, to your listeners, to the people who watch. Is I never expected this. I never expected this for turn up yesterday. This turned up yesterday, and I'm very young in my research, and I and I spoke to. I'm on last night and we just thought it was fantastic and he, he asked me to come on and talk about it also show me face because I have disappeared and um, that's where Heraclitus comes in for me <laughs> Heraclitus is uh, I, I, I took a, a bit of solace in Heraclitus for a while I took a step out and that quote is fantastic. Have you got that quote where you can get it up for me, Chewy? It's, um, it's number one. Because I think that's really important. Is Yeah. No, it's okay. It's okay. We're going to have to call it there. Okay. With what, Rob, with what, tell me, what the tell message me. is trying to get across. So how do I get from a death threat spell for what is all intents and purposes, the work of a man locked away in a lunatic asylum? He's poverty stricken, he's addicted to opium, he's destitute, and he's, he's had all this he's had all this treatment, what's ruined him, completely ruined him. How do we get from that death threat to something good in this gentleman? How how, how do we uh, why am I presenting this guy? Why would I present this guy to you who's writing death threats and why, why, why would we be interested in this chap? And you've got to ask the same question of all the intellectuals around in France of his day. Of his day, these intellectuals got together 
and the um, Matisse and Picasso, among other artists, sold works, sold parts of their works as a, as a fund for him. And they put a benefit on for him at the Sarah Bernard Centre. And all these, all, all these intellectuals of the day came out and they read excerpts from his work and celebrated him. And he is celebrated in France right now. And he's unheard of, essentially. I'd never heard of him. And the only reason I did hear of him is because of that last name, Arto. And uh, I've got I've got a relative who was an Arto. I've got a great, great granddad who was a French guy who came over from France as a master builder. He had no money either. But he came over as a master builder and made made his way and i have no idea what the link is there but it seems like when i've looked through this chap's artwork and i've looked through this chap's interests and i've looked through his images and i've seen quite a few recognitions and as i say at the beginning they were looking for recognitions i want people to recognize these things such as how, how we treat these people we, yeah, we and that recognition that that, 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 that recognition treat these disgraceful. It's absolutely disgraceful. You, you know, I'm on you could be treated the same. And you've you've had comments on, on the YouTube, you've had comments on the Discord and dealt with, albeit dealt with, you know, but, but they come through and they're, and they're disgusting. These things are the disgusting you know, the way they can treat people and in another in another day day and another time we'd be burnt. I'd have been I'd be burnt for reading out a spell. <laughs> Over this, he was a this this guy was an atheist, he was a complete atheist, and he was very, very intelligent and he knows his stuff. You can tell in all his quotes, you can tell in all the markers you look for, you know. As, as I say, he's took me to he's took me to the to the to the battle. Yes, the, there's there's a word that I, I want to share, and it's battle. And I'm going to cut off there. I'm not because uh, because this is a long thing. This is this isn't going to just end end today with one presentation or one conversation about it. This is a long conversation. This guy is well read well studied and in all the things we are becoming well read and well studied in so it seems and i think he's got a lot to offer us within so his Rob, books, is it fair to say that france that france um um puts it those who are inspired by the muse into into insane asylums is that a, a, a is that a bigger statement on life what, what do we leave with that if this is mr rogers which it isn't but if it were um what would that leave us with you you gave me two gentlemen who were put into geniuses that were put into yep. in, into insane asylums yeah are is it is that because the physics of the universe just doesn't is that just what it bends toward is that is that the bending we all have to become lunatics and throw our heads back and become bakken's so they can put us away. Is that where you're going with all of this? No, where I'm going with all this is the ancients knew better, didn't they? The ancients knew better than this. They didn't have lunatic asylums, did they? Where are the lunatic asylums? I'm on. Can you uh, answer that? You, no, you lunatic that? Asylum, no, lunatic asylums, you're really talking about um exiles and um yeah the guys hanging out the homeless people that hang out in the cemetery what? right Th those are your lunatic asylums what? right oh, in antiquity oh, oh. and and the and the prisons right those oh, are where the, or and and there are some in the palace there's some lunatics in the yes, palace yes <laughs> yes or all the emperors because that's where we're going to go we're going to go to an emperor with this chap this chap's wrote a lot he's wrote a lot about succubation incubation he's wrote a lot he's, he's wrote a lot about emperors and I, and I don't want to reveal everything on this on this one occasion 
I just wanted to introduce the guy and I wanted to explain where I've been and what I've been up to and how this subject can affect just a normal individual. I'm just a normal individual doing normal things, living a regular life. And uh, I've attempted to drop this subject. I've attempted, I've tried, I've tried to drop this subject and try to <laughs> carry on with normal life, you know, do the regular stuff like DIYing and the regular stuff. And it's, it's all consuming. It's all consuming at times. And you have to take a break. So I did. And I took a break. And in them two days, I received this. You, and, and I can't ignore this. You can't ignore it, can you? Something like this comes, you, you see the name Arto, and you just, uh, and then I'm here. And I shouldn't be, <laughs> but I am. I don't know how I got here. I don't know why I'm delivering this, but I am. No idea why. Yeah, and to that, to that I say, Hail Satan. And uh, uh, beautiful, yeah. Beautiful. Look, we're going to have him back. We're going to have our toe back right now. He's, he's one of our ghosts. So yeah, get comfortable make... with him, get comfortable with him. And that's why I want I'm... other people on the discord. I want other people to be, to be working toward uh, this goal of gaining these souls and, and uh, pulling them out of that nether where they are and bringing them back because their voices are the powers that are behind what's going on, right? Everybody here believes the fairy tale. We all believe the fairy tale until you get to the crime scene. And then your reality opens up and all of a sudden these ghosts, they're all pertinent. They're all relevant to what we're doing. So yeah, um, we are necromancers, congregation of Satan. Don't forget that. Rob, thank you very much. Thank I'm going to call it. Thanks, I'll be able to come to Discord for um, just 15, 20 minutes tonight. Um, but, uh, Rob, I think the dead owe you a gratitude. Thank you. Oh, I owe them a gratitude, I think. I owe hmm. everybody gratitude. I am very grateful. But hmm. I'm my own man and I have to do my own thing. And by doing that, I think I'll get there. Yeah. I think I'll help in, in other ways. That's right. Hail Satan. All the best, everyone. Hail Satan. All the best.